Hi everyone, on this video I want to share with you this that is going to be the home of Broadcast GPT. This is a GPT program to assist the broadcast industry with custom knowledge. This is going to be modular, open source, and it's going to save us a lot of time on the research part so we can spend more time on the development part. Okay, so this is a personal project. It's 100% open source where we're going to start putting the information inside the GPTs. And I'm going to go through this on this whole video. Okay, so I think I have to introduce myself again because my target on all these videos was the virtual production industry, but I, I want to actually cover broadcast industry on this video. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Uh, virtual production is broadcasting. Present I get a little bit frustrated that this is not taking care of broadcasting, which in reality, Yes. I'm doing R&D with uh, pretty much all these companies, also part of uh, RAS, some T, uh, Rapid Industry Solutions. I do have a horse on the race. I started doing this project because I needed, not because I wanted to do it, to be honest. I'm building this, uh, what I call it, a black box. I, we take all the metadata, interconnect all the metadata that's part of the system and also record the metadata so you can use it later for production or whatever you want to use it again in my case was hey i need this so i have to build it that's pretty much the only reason i did it i was thinking of making it open open source to be honest we'll see thing that i really want to make open source and, and this is where we are right now with this all these videos is this uh, broadcast gpt this came again from my own necessity to simplify my day okay it takes a lot of time the r d the art part the, the research is a lot of time i read a lot i watch a lot of videos i go to conferences i read a lot of uh, white papers but there's so much information right now. There is no no time to actually do that. Now, uh, 2023 was a horrible year uh, with the strike. By the way, the strike is over. Okay. Yeah, but I'm going to get a job right now. Again, the strike is over. People is rehiring right now. But this is a huge project. So I, I don't think I'm going to have time to do it by myself. So that's, that's where you know this uh, open source uh, idea comes to life and today we're going to focus on on the first part which is uh, all the data interest if you want to get more familiar with this project watch the, the previous video this is a simple part it's going to be your front end it could be an app or it could be uh, you know a website just simple website with uh, you know calling some apis to the second part which is the most important here is going to be the uh, orchestrator now the orchestrator, a lot of companies are working on this, okay? It's not just OpenAI or Microsoft and Google with Gemini. I feel that <laughs> maybe like a hundred companies working on this. So technically, Asians is, is going to become the next milestone on AI. So those are the big companies working on that. And then you have this process I'm focusing. One is Asians GPT. It was one of the first open source projects introducing actual working Asians. Then there is also GPT Pilot that now is integrated inside Visual Studio. These are two good examples of task-oriented GPTs. And then Charis, Microsoft Charis. I would say the Charis is the precursor of what Microsoft Copilot is right now. But service is open to all the LLMs and it's oriented to general tasks. And this is the direction of what I think will become the future of uh, Swarm Asians. And finally, the Shapiro's, you have the Haas and ACE framework. These are the two projects that I'm following very close. I really like the idea of that they're local. One of the requirements is it has to be local. I want to contribute to the Shapiro's. Probably this is the part of where I, I can contribute. We'll, we'll see. This is where I come up with. Okay, so, and where I'm going to focus this whole project right now. So this is where I think I uh, clarify what probably I think that's actually the secret of OpenAI. When OpenAI launched all the GPTs, one of the things that they hinted, let me go to the next slide, is the creation of smaller GPTs, transformers, pun intended, that it's feeding ChatGPT. So ChatGPT is in reality a combination of thousands, if not millions of small GPTs, small transformers, and each one individually, they're experts on one thing. So let me go to this slide so we are on the same page on you know what the actual GPT is, this kind of GPTs. When OpenAI launched the GPTs, one of the biggest confusion I, I think that happened is that people start confusing that GPTs were just this part of the, the GPT, which is creating a more narrow 
instructions to generate better results, which is technically right. Yes, I mean, it's something that you can do on your, on your prompt. And then you start seeing these thousands of thousands of GPTs that it becomes only this, right? It's just a pre-prompt GPT, but this is not the beauty of the actual GPTs. The beauty of GPTs is this part here, the knowledge part, where you can upload the file and be an expert on that file. The quality of information that, that you get is going to be beyond what the large language model is capable of. And then is this th uh, third part, which is the action part. And this is where I think uh, a lot of people, you know, is missing the point of, of what you can actually do with GPT. But when you do, it becomes this super AGI, uh, at least AGI, on that specific field. Now, this is the structure of uh, this project. And as many people pointed before that, yes, there is a 128 limit on information that you can upload. But reality, it doesn't. this is the magic of GPTs that you can create with the actions, a pre-process that takes all that information, but let's say Unreal Engine, file documentation, okay, Epic Games. And GPTs gives you the power to index all that information on a smaller chapters, on a smaller GPTs of a top of 128K each one. But you do multiples of those 128K. That's the beauty of this uh, GPT. So this is what we're going to do with this project. We're going to get all this information. And I'm talking about user manuals, service manuals, API documentation. This is going to be tricky. But we're going to talk about this. Data sheets, schematics, diagrams, hardware documentation, software documentation, instructional videos. Yes, we can do videos too. Educational content, standards papers, white papers, uh, GitHub repos too, patents. Now, without this, without the orchestrator, this by itself is really powerful. I think that if we start on this side, if we start on the knowledge and creating a collection of GPTs just for broadcasting. And by the way, I'm talking about broadcasting. This could be anything. That's an X for whatever you want to do. If we start doing that, if we start uh, aggregating all this stuff, by the time that you have the orchestrator, whatever, OpenAI or Microsoft or Google call it, you can have a powerful tool like uh, right now that you don't have to wait for this swarm of agents. So that's why I'm making this. Uh, first stage is going to be aggregating grading of the information and the second part is going to be just making it public so you're going to see us stuff like this where you're not going to upload a file the idea is to upload links and once you got the information you're going to create this GPT. as a user i don't see any problem for you to upload documentation i want to be very self-aware of this situation of people use non-proprietary information to feed ai but as a user you know the user manual you should be able to do it now the reason i we're going to need a, a lot of help here is I'm very uh, like a ton of focus on my stuff, the stuff that I work with, like all this stuff. So in your situation, upload that information. So we're going to be able to get everything. Just imagine NAV uh, GPT, right? The only problem that I see is SDKs are not publicly available. So it's going to be up to you to create those GPT first for you. And so you can do all the R&D that you need to. So before I close this video, I want to show you something so you get very excited. This is a project that we did with Immersive Dimension. It was very specific for Apple Vision Pro, virtual production, in 3D. Okay, these are two uh, Rekko models. And I want you to see the specs of this. We're talking about exterior 180. The camera was running at 96 frames per second on actually this is the right uh, frame rate. The LED volume was running at 192 interpolating A and B frames for stereoscopy. Offset one frame of each camera so they can do you know each one of the, the frames on the LED one. And on top of that you have to have control of shutter angle, f-top, ISO uh, an offset of each, each one of the cameras, subframes of the LED wall, inserting some black frames so, so you can compensate, but also the brightness. And came up with something like this, which is we cut to this one master clock, LED processor, your LED panel, your two cameras, your tracking system, your, your lens encoder. You have to offset and get perfectly in sync all this equipment, sending both images to a custom OpenCV that tracks a person so you can track. Uh, focus that you can send to Unreal Engine. All this with pretty much seven SDKs and creating one software that can put everything together. And I wanted to show you this because this is a project that it will take me, I don't know, like a month to put all this together. And I literally did it in one day.
So I'm a programmer, right? So do I feel like a threatened as a programmer? And I would say no, because it's something. This is helping me. Uh, and the other side is uh, not technical people that is not able to program. It's going to start using these GPTs to start at least setting up that it's there on each one of the software. They have this uh, API, you know, functionality that you're going to be able to use it without actually being a programmer. I can tell you, this is going to change the whole industry in a good way. For example, as a broadcast engineer, when you start working on, on switchers, for example, a lot of uh, API programming is available on all the software. It's just the fact that it's so hidden on the user manual that sometimes it's not worth it because you, you might solve one problem and then you create three more problems, right? But I think the combination of GPTs and companies collaborating in this direction is going to make our lives so much easier and the production is going to skyrocket, basically. It's my opinion. Anyway, so we're waiting for this, right? That's where we're heading, right? But aggregating all these documentations can allow everyone to get access to the best information, which is user manual SDKs. Epic Games. Anyway, look how cute they are. That's so cute. I mean, they're not going to kill us. Come on, look at that. It's, it's so cute. So cute. Anyway, I will hope to have pretty much everything. I really appreciate every company that is currently thinking on customer support to think about GPT. I, I hope I help all your companies see, so we can find that checkbox, you know, that we can never find. And yeah, that's that's my point, that checkbox, finding that checkbox. And please let me know in the comments what do you think about this project? What do you think? Uh, I'm not thinking about it. And how we can work together because, hey, again, this is like yeah, game theory where you don't want to collaborate we answer forums comments all the time we help each other all the time this is it this is the same thing help me to help you but help us to get that documentation in. you know the more info we have uh it's going to be less stressful for everybody to actually load a new gpt create a new gpt so let's do that together that's the only thing i'm asking okay all your proprietary information is your own proprietary information that's that's clear but help me to help you that's pretty much it. Okay, so thank you to all these companies. They're helping me. 2023 was a horrible, horrible, horrible year. Most of the time in 2023, I spent it like doing a lot of R&D with all these companies. And I really, really, really appreciate them. It was fun to still have access to the R&D department of each one of these companies. So I really, really appreciate you. When I was making this video, I just find out. Then I'm going to work on CS. So thank you, Alvin. I'm going to help your studios build the Accenture boot at CES. It looks really fun. The other thing, if you have a project for 180 degree stereoscopic for Apple Vision Pro. Okay. Make a comment. Send me a direct message. Uh, this is my LinkedIn. This is my all the stuff. And thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Believe it or not, your help helped a lot. Like and subscribe, all the stuff. And see you next time.